for all of the behaviors, uh, we asked two sets of questions. Uh, the one was, how important is it to you that your behavior, that your organization displays these organizational behavior, these these behaviors? So we uh, there was a scale uh, where we assigned the value of naught to a hundred, with naught being not important at all, and a hundred being extremely important to me. And then we measured uh, whether employees thought that those behaviors were actually displayed by their organizations. So what we were examining was what at Harvard they called the conduct gaps. In other words, the discrepancy between the should and the actual. Between employee views about how their companies should behave versus their views about how they actually behave. And obviously, where you've got wide conduct gaps, you've got red flags that you, that you may want to address. Uh, and uh, when it came to how widespread are these behaviors within your organization, uh, we assigned a value gain of 0 to 100, with 0 being strongly disagree and 100 being strongly agree. Now, the target range was really between 75 and 100, because that represented the sort of broad zone of agreement that our organizations are displaying these behaviors. Anything under 75 might become cause for concern. So, when it came to the importance of ethics to employees in these organizations, what we found was that across the board, in all of these different categories, ethical behavior was important to employees. And this very much aligned with the HBS finding uh, they measured it somewhat differently, but what they found was uh, engaging with employees working for uh, multinational companies in 23 countries, there was enormous consensus about how people thought their companies should behave. Now, what this implies is that ethical values are widely shared. Now, I think it's a very striking finding. Uh, in other words, those, that consensus transcends all sorts of differences. Business environment, culture, grade. We actually launched this last night at Gibbs uh, with the Chief Justice as our keynote speaker, uh, with the CEO of, of Business Leadership South Africa and the, the, uh, the chair of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It was a very um, uh, powerful event, I thought. And, you know, the Chief Justice was speaking about our polarized society, about how, what, you know, about what we have in common. And I think, in a way, this supports that. I think this has all sorts of practical implications, because I think that it implies that uh, if a company is considering interventions to promote ethical behavioral change, they are more likely to resonate and have impact, given that people basically agree on what's important. Now, of course, the discrepancies come when it's how we, 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 the discrepancies arise when it comes to how the organizations are actually behaving and how, indeed, they perhaps themselves are actually behaving. So that was the first key finding. Now, in terms of what we call the ethical fitness of these organizations, so ethical fitness is a term that I borrowed from the late Rushworth Kidder, who was the editor of the Christian Science Monitor. And... Basically, what we did is we looked at all of the behaviors in those categories or constructs and we, ref we found the, the average, and that was the score per, per category. And then we took all those behaviors and we created an overall average, which is that red bar on the left-hand side. And what you see is that employees tend to have a more positive view about how their organizations engage with external stakeholders, customers, suppliers, and broader society, than they do with how the organizations engage with them as employees. Because you have treatment of employees under that target range, and you have organizational culture and practices which largely relates to the employee experience, and that's also under the target range. So we called that the external-internal gap. We also asked them about whether they had seen misconduct in their organization. 
and we gave 18 specific types of misconduct and asked them whether they had seen those types of misconduct either often, sometimes, or not at all in the last 24 months. And we found that, uh, that altogether 45% of people had seen misconduct, including 14% who'd seen it often. But we'll come to that a bit later. This, so this was a kind of high level, very high level summary of the results. 